hello and welcome to yet another episode of The Shift. As we take time to celebrate our sisters, our mothers who are making great strides in their several sectors. Today in studio, I'm joined by Plaxidas Wenyika, who is a Zimbabwean Afro soul singer and songwriter. She's a pioneer of the Urban Groovers movement, which shaped and marked the transition in the local music industry. She made her mark with her first album, Tisa Paradzane, which made waves and saw the title track topping the local charts. And we are delighted to have you today. Thank you for having me. It is our priority to celebrate women who are a setters to other women in Zimbabwe, in Africa, and the world at large. And we are quite humbled to have you today. So maybe as we start, people see you singing, maybe on social media or back in the 2000s. Can you just briefly tell us, who is that Cedars? I am a multifaceted individual. That's why I always like to let people know. Um, I'm a mom. I'm a daughter. I am uh, an economist. I am an entrepreneur. I am someone created to inspire people, especially with positivity. I love women. I love empowering women and just generally spreading good vibes. That is who I am. I really um, enjoy or celebrate what you spoke about, about inspiring women. But before we go to that, can you just briefly tell us, how did you end up being in music? Um, I've always had a, a passion for music growing up, so it, it might sound silly, but for all those who happen to come across this in their young daughters and they find themselves loving music, singing in front of the mirror, imagining themselves as stars, it's an in, 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 inborn thing. So I think it just started when I was young, I'd look at these artists, I'd listen to music and I'd want to sing the way they were singing, you know. So I grew up on influences of um, your Dolly Patton's, your Whitney Houston's, and those ladies were quite soulful and had music, they just moved you. So I think they had a great um, impact on how I ended up um, singing like soulful music that I sing today. So I grew up um, loving music. I went to high school. I was in a choir. That helped groom the talent and kept me singing. And then once I got to university, I still wanted uh, to pursue music. But I didn't actually find people <laughs> who were doing music at the time. So I ended up doing rap. Yeah. Yes, girl. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, so that's actually how I started. Um, so as I was rapping, I eventually met uh, this young lady uh, who was called Pusha Masose. She was like, you know what, there's a studio recording people. You sound good. You need to go there. I'm like, really? For free? I'm going. So when I went there, I met Mr. Delani Makalima. And when I met him, um, I was like, okay, do your thing. So I went in as a rapper. I like, worked on my bars. And um, once I was there, he's like, okay, I like the rap, but can you sing some more? I was like, I will sing because I love singing. And so I, I took my time and I sang. It's like, you know what, why are you rapping? I was like, because I can't find <laughs> anywhere to sing or someone to sing with. So because I'm so passionate about music, I end up doing rap because at least it still keeps me within um, the music itself. And so we then uh, just started working together and all the rest is history. I, I recorded my first album and we're here. Just to acknowledge that when you started, this was a male-dominated industry. Mm -hmm. How did you fit in as a woman? Because there are a lot of industries that people talk about. They say men are not comfortable working with women. Men are intimidated by women sitting on boards or sitting on tables with them. Can you just share with us your journey, you know, starting to rape or starting to sing mm -hmm. where men are dominating in that industry? In all honest, like to be really honest, I was pretty blessed because we are all girls or in our family and my dad always just told me that listen there's nothing a man can do that you can't I think because he was a man and he knew as a woman it's gonna be tough he just raised us as tough my dad was an army officer so mm. I you know we were tough like that and so I it's never occurred to me that I can't do anything with this male dominance that I, I believed in who I was and what I was doing and I believe that the struggles I faced as an artist with the same that with the brain race were facing them or I it's, it's the same challenge it's nothing to do with my sex mm -hmm. so it was always a mindset that I had so I never really noticed to be really honest um, 
as I was getting into music that oh my god there's women and there's men it's only when I had interviews like this where people ask me so what's the difference mm -hmm. and I'm not saying there aren't things let me put it clearly there aren't things that when you look back like oh okay so I guess some things because when you're a woman you obviously you know might be disadvantaged in, in such a manner How but can you, uh -huh. do you care to share some of these things because there are young women who want also to get into your industry mm -hmm. and they might be you know I don't want to get there. Can you just share with us some of these things? Okay. Um, I think for me, uh, what I observed is if you do like soulful music like me, like laid back, it is kind of hard to constantly have shows and you find that in our country. But I think it's just a general situation in terms of places to go and perform at. Because you find most people, especially back in the day, you'd be performing at bars. Mm -hmm. So it means you have to be ready to do that. Because the very first show I think that I did, I was in, um, what's this place? I'm not forgetting, forgetting it was a popular sports bar, you know. But at the end of the day, if you understand that, it's work. It just is work. It, it didn't click to me then that, oh my word, I'm in a bar. Because for me, it's like, this is my chance. I'm just, you know, doing my thing. So you have to be open-minded and just understand that art is art. Um... And I guess for young women, I want them to also be aware of the fact that as... But this one, I think, is just a general thing for women. Not necessarily for women in the arts only. Mm -hmm. In any environment as a woman, because of our nature, because of how we're built, we are the ones who carry pregnancies. And we are the ones who tend to take more care of our offspring. You'll find that sometimes it can sort of take you back in your career. Because some people prefer at times when they have kids to become stay-at-home moms and raise their kids and then go back to work whether you're in corporate or you're not. Mm -hmm. So I think each woman has that choice. So that choice, so that moment to make that choice will come for every woman. Where you think, do I want to stay at home and be dependent like, Baba Choya, and you know, take care of me. Because it's a good model. For some people it actually does work. But then for some people also they become unfulfilled. So I think when they're going into it or currently are in, in music, they need to keep that at the back of their minds. So those are things that then happen, but I believe that your talent really doesn't like fade. If you really want to do a comeback, you can come back because the talent's always been there. No one can take that away from you. So um, I think for women that are coming up, that's something very important, uh, especially if you're going to be in music and to just grow a thick skin generally. Because people always have opinions, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. They think you should be slim, or you should be this, or you're not shaking it enough, or you're shaking it too much, <laughs> you know. So trying to just get that balance is always tricky. But I, I, I would, you know, say, be yourself, be confident in in your gifts, and you are you for a reason. So do you? The world mm. will catch up. They will mm. catch up, and they will love. And they must always remember this: you can't be everything to everyone so everyone has their audience mm -hmm. so don't 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 get caught up in the rat race do you your followers will be your followers and they will love you for it so don't try and do what x is doing what y you can pick up lessons okay that works that does but still remain true to who you are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you mentioned you had a father who was in the army mm -hmm. you're at a university you're studying economics mm -hmm. and then Suddenly, you have to perform in a bar. Mm -hmm. How did they react to that? Well, you know, my father passed on as I was actually starting university. Okay. Um, but I have a very, I had and still have a very strong support system because we're very close in our family. So even as I was performing in bars, my siblings and my mom would be there because it was an afternoon recording. <laughs> it was just literally us being recorded in there. And so you find that uh, from day one, I've always had support from primary school. I'm, I'm one of those kids that, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know, <laughs> that was me. And I, uh, in primary, was very active. I did sports. I did, um, I was acting. I was always doing these dramas, going to different schools. I even won awards. We would compete with other schools for that. So my parents had always believed in me, made me believe in myself. So when I then told my mom, this is what I want to do, she was like, just go for it. She had always known since high school when she would come and be singing. So I don't think she, it really shocked her. 
yeah they were like okay let's 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 go for it let's see but i'm not sure about my dad if he'd been alive i don't know it could have been a different story <laughs> <laughs> but um it turned out the way it turned out because that's how it was meant to turn out and there are stereotypes that maybe if you mm-hmm. those people were in the arts they are mm-hmm. not educated mm-hmm. can you maybe just deal with that well you you know that's a very interesting uh way of looking at it um but i think that's just it's it's a misconception it is just a myth you know how people say things and then they run with them and and you tell a lie often enough then people will come to believe it in my generation how what i noticed and what i experienced and what i will let people know is when we started urban um groups it's not like we all made together it just happened but we all had our lives outside of music you find that ray and royce we're all in university the same time I was. Mm-hmm. People, I don't know how they've missed this one. Um, uh, I know that one of the twins did um, laboratory sciences. He actually owns a lab now. Um, and the other twin I'm forgetting, but he, either way, they were both in university. Decibel was in university. He had a BSc in chemistry. Mm-hmm. You know, so these are people, David Dufinise was into IT. All these young people that were doing it, most of them were educated. I think maybe that's why probably also Urban sort of, sort of sort of took a back seat, because people had options, and when you know times were tough and the economy was going to a slump, like all people were making what you saw there, we are not going to be part of this thing, and they were part of the brain drain and left the country because they had options. So I think, um, and I'm not saying that all artists, please get me right, have um, like degrees or diplomas or whatever but I, I, I will say this though that they are brilliant and creative in their own way and you don't have to have a degree to con- convince people you're good at what you do mm-hmm. some entrepreneurs even up to now that own banks and some of these big things they're just people who've literally taught themselves along the way as they went so I think that uh, when it comes to education it's what are you educated in are you educated in the things that matter Interesting. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. that, that's my take. And with that, do you see maybe education as, as an advantage to what she did? Did it add any value to your music or your music career? It definitely did. Um, because I think for me personally, uh, because I've been in the corporate world, so you find like last year I launched uh, my comeback and I did a, a launch which was live and I was able to garner corporate support because I understand what my brand is and I know how to explain that to corporates and I know what corporates also want from me because it's like you find a lot of people have this misconception that corporates owe them. No, <laughs> corporate is a business entity. What value am I bringing to their brand? as an artist so because I know these things I'm able to explain it better I'm able to position myself better and create uh, propositions that make sense for them to say oh you know what okay this is what you want to do this is the leverage that I then use that academic background it really does help Mm -hmm. because I then understand even if they say no I know it's nothing personal you said that genuinely there's an exhausted budget or they probably have programs that aren't necessarily congruent with what I'm going for so it, it does matter, education matters, because um, there are things that you want to go into. But like I was also saying, I keep saying it's the type of education, especially if you want to go into business. Uh, you need to be well read, you need to be well spoken, have that confidence mm-hmm. that when you meet people, you actually can say things in front of people. <laughs> And it makes sense <laughs> because it's not enough just to hold the mic. Because I think being in the public space, especially, we're very blessed in this to be alive in such a time as this, because you can be an a, an artist, you can be an influencer, you know, you can inspire people with your stories. You just need to know how to package it. You know, you need to know how to get in touch with your core audience, which still goes back to what I was saying. You are not for everyone. And mm-hmm. once you understand that, it's actually strength and not a weakness. Mm-hmm. Let's do a flashback. Mm-hmm. You are in that studio where you, you did a rap performance mm-hmm. and then they said, sing. Mm-hmm. What then happened after that? I then started reporting. I, we, we, we literally would go to the studio every day and we started writing. And the first time I performed, um, I recorded anything that was ever heard was uh, on David Jifuni's Esquire. One day I was at the studio, Delaney had recorded 
um, the song with David and they didn't have anyone. I happened to come from college that day. I was like, let me go hang in the studio. And he's like, hey, yo, Plex, do you know this song? I'm like, yeah, I do. It's quiet. He's like, okay, go, go into the booth. I'm like, okay, quiet. <laughs> and next thing I know is uh, people are waking up to the voice, <laughs> to my voice every single morning, you know. On, 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 on most of the radio stations, they'll play that is like at six o'clock. Mm-hmm. So you know that that's life. That's the, the the amazing thing about like taking a chance when you you see opportunity and walking and living in your strength. Mm-hmm. How did that make you feel? You know, listening to your voice every morning and people singing along to your song. It's the most beautiful feeling. It's so fulfilling because sometimes you don't know what you're creating um, can be that powerful. And when like the, my entire album then came out and people are singing line for line and people are telling, you know, we're, we're writing lyrics, you know, in, in school because of you and you meet people. Like for me, this is like the 20th anniversary actually mm. of me actually going into music and being officially on air. And up to now, I still have people who tell you to separate than it's my jam. It was what daddy day, you know, when I was in grade five, or when, you know, this is the one I used when I cheated with my girlfriend. Like, I'm sorry, man, take me back. Or people be like, you know, that's our wedding song. Mm-hmm. That's just such a blessing to have created music, even the other albums I've released. And people will keep telling you, you know, that music moves us. Because for me, I think it's not just about making people dance, that's really nice. But at the end of the day, when someone can sit down and listen and you touch a special part in their soul, in their heart, that they trick the memories of their life with it, I think it's invaluable. Mm-hmm. And you are an Afro soul singer. How did you end up singing that? You know, you said you were a rap, rap singer mm-hmm. initially, and then you then uh, got to be where you are and seeing what you're singing. Mm-hmm. Did they, anyone inspire you to choose that kind of a genre? Not really. I've always been so full. Remember when I was doing raps because I didn't have any way to sing. But when I sang, generally, even do which guru my visual, how do mean by the way? <laughs> <laughs> but um, seriously though, um, what I find is by nature that is who I, as you grow older, you sort of get to understand yourself. I believe that's just my calling in life. I'm very soulful. And generally the things I tend to do very well at is when I'm talking to people, I'm inspiring people, whether it's actually just when talking one-on-one like this, mm-hmm. you know, and even when I write, even the music I generally listen to, it's very positive things. And so, you know, the Word of God says, you speak what your heart is full of. Mm-hmm. And so because that's what, what's full in my heart, and the kind, what I feel, it's, it's what tends to come out on. And I, I was, like I said earlier, I, 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 I was raised on country music. I mean, country music is deep. Like, you can talk about anything, you know. Uh, there's songs about, um, there's this song called, you picked a fine, it's called Lucy, I think, or Lucille. I don't know. But it, it, it has lyrics that say, you picked a fine time to leave me, Lucille. Five hungry children, what, 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 you know. And when you're a young kid and you're listening to this and it's, it's sipping in, you're listening to your Don Williams, I Believe in Love, ETC. So, for me, it really had a strong, like, um, bearing on how I, I took the world. Not say I only listen to country, please. I would also listen to the radio, whatever else was playing. But generally, I gravitated towards your slow, mellow stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm. We're going to take a short break. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to the second and final uh, episode of The Shift and today we are joined uh, by Plaxidus Wenyika who is sharing her story and inspiring us and uh, before we went for the break you were sharing your journey but you took a break and you came back. Um, What contributed to that? Did you see music uh, not being your passion or did you find something else to do? Like I said earlier, I'm multifaceted. All right, so that means I have uh, different sides to who I am. the different uh, abilities that I, I carry. And so you find that during 
the seasons that I release and take a break, I'm focusing on other things. There's a time I was in co- the corporate world. Mm-hmm. I was enjoying that. I was using my economics degree. I can't just let it be. So I was out there. There's a time I was uh, going uh, for uh, <laughs> different passions I had. You'd find that there's a time I actually had a lingerie shop. It's something I was exploring, going into retail. Um, I've worked um, in the medical field. There's a time I was heading a medical aid. So it's, it's been quite interesting. Whenever you find me quiet, it means I'm dabbling in, in something else mm-hmm. outside of just the music. And I believe that also music is inspired. Sometimes you have other things that you have going on and just you don't feel like being in that space. At least for me, that's how it works. Then there are times I'm like, okay, I really feel inspired. I, I feel like writing. And so I then write and go into the studio and do my thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think as we discuss, we need to uh, talk about stereotypes mm-hmm. that are in all environments. There are stereotypes that women in music, there's a lot of violation of women's rights. Mm-hmm. Or in politics, there is violation of women's rights as well. Have you felt such in your case? And unfortunately, maybe uh, for those who wanted me to run with the narrative, I, I, can't, I can't relate to it. I haven't been in such a situation. Um, but it doesn't mean probably that other people don't experience it, but I haven't, in all honesty. Because for me, it's always been about the talent. And sometimes I always say to people also, as women, we can't play victim at times. We have to just own that some things are probably just hard for everyone. So you find that sometimes people will be like, oh, you know what, I'm not getting called for gigs uh, because I'm a woman. No, sometimes you have to go back to the dream board and see, is your song a hit? Because if your song is a hit, mm-hmm. people are going to want to see you. People are going to want to just pay you because you, you can then negotiate. But then what sometimes happens is you're not yet ready. So instead of people working on their craft, people probably think that, you know what, if I go and be the promoter, if I you know, use my feminine wiles, or if I try... So when you go there from a place of desperation, you put yourself in a place where you can't um, negotiate for your worth because you're not yet ready. So I always say this even to artists who, whether you're male or you're female, that at some point when you're coming up, you do free gigs and it's not someone taking advantage of you. It's you trying to put yourself in front of the audience. Mm -hmm. But you have to be smart about how it is you're doing it. So there's always that need for for balance. But I actually think that women are really doing well. You have artists like Tammy, your Amara Browns, your women who do jazz. I mean, all these different women are doing so well. So for me, to say we're looking for a seat at the table, I don't think it's valid, not in this day and age. Mm-hmm. What we're saying is we need to show up at the table and show how brilliant we are and own the game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also, um, you know, there are stereotypes to say, uh, you know, the pull her down syndrome. Mm-hmm. If you see a sister going up, mm-hmm. there are other women saying, Anujita ere, Azita say, say, you've been part of a group at uh, Photo Sisters and mm-hmm. you've worked with women. Mm-hmm. Can you just say with us your experience working with them? Women are amazing. And I think that pull her down syndrome is um, changing, especially as women, now that we have things like social media, we see how other women are doing it. You learn. You should be inspired by what other people do and clap hands for them because everyone is brilliant in their own way. I will never be a man. I can't go on stage and dance. That ain't my thing. But she, she's shining and killing it. Mm-hmm. And I can comfortably, confidently give her her praise and her flowers because that's her. Her brilliance doesn't take away from my brilliance. So I, I think a lot of people, if you're doing a pull her down or pull him down thing, it's from a place where you're not sure about yourself. Because why are you shaken by someone's brilliance? We can all be brilliant. We all shine differently because we bring something to the table. Life would be boring if everyone was black seeders. It would be so boring. <laughs> Imagine Afros all the whole day. But it's nice when you have like this fast upbeat things, but when you're, you're taking it easy on a nice cruise, you want something mellow. So that's where I fit in. So every, if, if, if people and women mastered that concept, that everyone has a space, and that someone else's light, you know, it doesn't dim yours, or the beauty of another woman doesn't mean the absence of yours. We all are beautiful, we all are amazing. You just have to own you, you know. Whatever it is you got going on, like I said, you have your people, 
and enjoy your people. Don't try and convince people who are not sold on you. Those are not your people. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And how do you see the future of the arts industry? Mm-hmm. Looking at the new genre now, we have seen dance hall, which is quite the, uh, the popular culture mm-hmm. that we have today. How do you see it comparing it to the uh, urban groups movement? Um, I like that you actually refer to urban groups. Urban groups already had Zim dance hall. I don't know. When people say, say urban groups, okay, there's something I'm going to refer people to now. There's mm-hmm. on YouTube right now one that talks of the genesis of urban groups. It was uh, done by Arnold. Uh, so profound. So if you go on YouTube, you'll find this whole story of urban groups told. So people actually understand. That's why there was rap. There was me doing so. You had your major is Those people were doing Zim Danzo. Zim Danzo and Agum Ganas. It happens to be a popular genre now. And it is still part of urban. Change you know what urban grooves with people means? It just means anything that's urban contemporary music. Okay. So if, if we're going to say what is urban, Tammy is urban. But is she doing Zim Dancer? No. Mm-hmm. But Zim Dancer is urban. She is urban. So it's like, it's just a word like, okay, no, what music in town. All right. <laughs> if we break it down that simply. Mm-hmm. And um, for me, Zim Dancer is amazing. I, you know, don't like it. Because when I get it, I just want to do it. 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 I just do you know what I'm saying? And you have all these different artists coming through of your Takura, you know, coming through the whole R&B, hip-hop type vibe. And it makes life exciting. It's the variety which makes our Zimbabwean music, um, you know, brilliant. And I think when I look at the, the landscape now and I see what's happening, I think it's about time that Zim went out there and became amazing. We need to have more Zim artists out there. And I think it takes us as a people to support our own. And um, I have to say that people are trying. People are trying, you know, to support our own. It's not also easy for artists to also go out there. It takes quite a lot of resources. So sometimes we're competing on an uneven basis. Mm-hmm. Because as Zimbabweans, we don't have record labels anymore. Because I will tell you something like this. If I look at, for example, um, Kuzawa Africa, um, someone who, for Af- for me, for from an Afro soul perspective, I would want to be able uh, to do work at Levorana Zonke, your Liras. Um, but if you then look, these people under labels, so a label can easily say, "Listen, we're putting in a hundred thousand US dollars. We're putting in a hundred and fifty thousand, and we're going to go all the way." Mm-hmm. Now here, who's going to give me 100,000, 150,000 to go all the way? That's why you can go everywhere in the world and do amazing things because these people are signed up to your Sony's. And um, it, it's, it's the way it is, but it doesn't stop us from doing the best we can with what we have. Mm-hmm. So we ought to celebrate where we are and keep aiming because for me, I have those dreams. I, I, I am going to eventually get there. I need to get my sound out there and show that Zim has Zim soul. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In your journey as an artist, did you face any challenges which you can share with us? And you can share with other young women who are also in the industry and they think maybe it's just going to be a cruise, they're going to start singing today and then they're going to be popular tomorrow. And, you know, just share with us some of the down moments that you faced in your journey. I think initially when we're starting, they just have to learn to read contracts. Read your contracts and understand what they mean. Read the expectations of someone who engages you for a show. Let it be clear. Because sometimes, you know, when we started Tengas, you might know it's, it's a given. Munachandi pa accommodation, or I'm going to be in such and such a place. And then you get there and it's not what you want. So those are some of the things we learned. Just read your contracts, make sure it's clear, and don't do shows without people paying. Because people like, oh, you know what, I'm going to give you half, then after the show, there's no after the show, before you go on stage, give me all my money, I, this is not a partnership. So if you do a loss, I don't want to hear stories <laughs> about, uh, sister, I'm not going to you know, nah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. because it's not like if the person makes extra profit, they're going to give you the money anyway, it's, it's their gamble, you know. So those are things I would say for women artists and all upcoming artists, just be smart about that one, and also when it comes to contracts because there's some contracts that you look at that people are signing like why should someone have the right to use your your song that you created for eternity there's nothing like that people should you should have limits to how much uh people can use your brand 
or even your persona, your pictures, etc. People give her away rights. How how do you not know you're not going to be the, the the biggest star? And then that person starts making money off you for free. Mm-hmm. So you've got to always just make sure you have. And if they're an upcoming artist, I would suggest they also join. Um, organizations like Zumura, they really are good. They have these workshops where you're taught, okay, this is what happens. And if you have a fight, you can have an organization that can pick up that battle for you. So I think for me, those are some of the things that I'm like, ah, keep an eye out there. Make sure you're safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have a new album, uh, Phoenix Rising. Let's just share with us, what are you communicating in that whole album? For me, Phoenix Rising was um, an album that I felt inspired to write um, from a perspective of uh, a grown, sexy woman, period. Like, I turned 40, I feel like I'm so comfortable in my own skin, I own who I am, I love who I am, and I'm loving life. And I wanted to express that. And I realized, no one was quite saying that, because it's almost as if when you're 40, you, know, you should just kind of be like, oh, quiet, no sad. And that is such a lie. <laughs> How many beautiful, hot, amazing, kind, fearless, successful women do we have? And who is telling their story and their narrative? And not just the women, but even the men themselves. They're doing these great things, but no one is singing to them or for them or telling their stories in music and things that they relate to. And so for me, I felt like as I'm coming back, I want a different story. And I'm fully in Afro, so and I'm gonna pray I don't to conform to anyone else's. I have my audience that actually wants to come sit down, go on a date, you know, be chilled, have their wine or their dinner, and I'm serenading them, taking them back and bringing them to the present. Mm-hmm. So for me, that's the album that I wanted. I wanted an album that would inspire people, especially in the genre of love. Because these days you have a lot of um, umjolo stories. <laughs> and I'm not saying it's not there. It's mm-hmm. there, but I'm, I'm old school. And I don't think I'm ever not going to stop believing in love. <laughs> I believe that love is there. Love really is there. People are so scared. But I always keep telling people this, that the more you keep say, you see that people sometimes underestimate the power of words. Keep saying mjolo mjolo, you're going to keep getting mjolo, because that's what you're confessing. Mm-hmm. Keep saying, I believe in love, I'm lovable, uh, this love is going to find someone, and someone's waiting for me, and you're going to get that person who wants to be on the phone with you for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> They're going to want to serenade you, because that's the vibe and energy you're attracting to yourself. So that's the kind of vibe that my music brings. It, mm-hmm. I remember even the comments on YouTube, like, oh my God, Plax, you make me like, wait for the next guy in my life. I feel like I just need <laughs> someone. And I think th- that's the thing. We need such positive music and just feel good, laid back, easy music. So for me, that was the whole idea. And um, I think I did a good job. Mm-hmm. Because I know a lot of young people right mm-hmm. now, if they see people in love, they say, it's going to end in tears. You mm-hmm. know? That's just what, uh, people, what people are thinking. Mm-hmm. But before we uh we close mm-hmm. what's your favorite song on the new album maybe we can just play it for the viewers who are watching us today all right uh so when i <laughs> was doing my press release i remember most of the uh journalists were asking me plaxidas who is this album for what is the feel so what i can basically say is this album is for the grown and sexy mm-hmm. and so the song that is grown and sexy for real for real <laughs> on that album is uh feel your love so yeah so we're going to listen to fuel your love enjoy
uh, her song Feel Your Love from the new album. But before we go, we're going to ask her to do a freestyle for us. So, Plexidus can just take it away. Yo, I'm a diva, I don't please ya Cause I'm a crowd pleaser, ain't no nigga no go digger Cause I ain't going digger, got enough stash I don't deal with tracks, so they be asking who the honey Spending all the money looking fly in a bimmer Remind you of a winner trying to get my flow But they don't know it ain't about the dough That's the way it's been since way back when The CE to the disc Wow <laughs> mm -hmm. But before we go, uh, Plexidas, I want you to talk to young women who also want to be one, like you who are inspired by what you do what word would you leave with them today i will ask you to look into the camera and just address them hey gorgeous hey beautiful you need to know that you're special everything in your life starts with self-love and self-acceptance you are yourself you're not like anyone else so whether you're skinny you're slim you're uh, curvy extra curvy You've got dimples, a smile, short hair, long hair, whatever it is, that's who you are. And so own it, own your power, own your gifts, love yourself and own yourself and go after your dreams, chase after them. They're going to be obst obstacles, but everyone faces them, just remember that. Champions aren't there because they happen to be lucky, they happen to be champions because they went through that and they overcame. So believe in yourself and always, always, queen, hold your head high. Mwah. Thank you so much, uh, Plaxidas, for coming through to the program. And I hope that all our viewers, young, old, who are listening to us were really inspired by her story. Till next time, it's a good afternoon from me, Romeo Bonikadzino, and the crew behind the scenes.